Welcome back to FT Markets. 2014 saw some pretty severe storms in financial markets, but what's the weather outlook for 2015? Will central banks still be able to keep the show pretty much on the road? With me to discuss his outlook for next year is Ewan Cameron Watt, the Chief Investment Strategist at BlackRock. Ewan, uh, welcome. We, we should, of course, start with central banks. Uh, the big question, are they going to be able to keep control of financial markets uh, in 2015 as they have in 2014? A uh, lot of um, issues, biggest one perhaps, is the divergence across the Atlantic. So I think that 2015 will still be a year of, I guess you could call it conventional central bank policy now, of expanding balance sheets, maybe at a slower rate than 2014. And so more of these stormy clouds and episodes of volatility. We have in our first chart though, we have um, your a very nice graphic showing the uh, scale and um, where the central bank liquidity is coming from. A bit of a shift in that pattern. Next yes, year. I mean what you can see is in the green, you can see the Bank of Japan is taking over the role of being the world's leading provider of liquidity from uh, the Fed in blue, uh, with the Bank of England contributing nothing. Uh, and the European Central Bank clearly open debate still, but will be doing more next year than this year. The problem is that some of the Japanese money will come out, some of the European money will come out, but not all of it will feed into markets. So, you know, we'll get more Octobers 2014, more volatility, more like the recent weeks as well. Uh, and it's navigating these bouts of volatility is going to be the key to successful outcome next year. Are, are you saying that QE by the ECB or the Bank of Japan is not the same as uh, Fed QE? Yes, yeah, some of it stays at home and of course Fed QE is in dollars which is the world's reserve currency which everyone borrows so it's a more domestic uh, impact than global impact uh, if you're not doing it in the world's reserve currency. Let's call up our second chart which shows um, quite a striking picture the divergence between what stock markets um, think about the world and what's actually happening in the real world if we look at earnings. Uh, which is the, um, the blue line there. Um, explain uh, what your point is with this chart. Well, f in the long run, corporate profits should drive share prices. Uh, and this divergence, which we're seeing here, is what you get in a bull market. Uh, and I think that what we're saying here is that this has been accomplished because of quantitative easing, because of very low interest rates. Uh, and as that changes, we've really got to see a pickup uh, in profit streams to have anything like the rate of return we've seen in the last five or six years. So what's your best guess? Does the blue line come up to the red or does the red come down to the blue? I think probably a bit of both and it will vary. We're talking about this being a year of divergence and it will vary a bit by region. Okay, let's look at our final chart, which is the, um, the great global bond rally we've seen over continuing over the past decade. And to the surprise of many, it continued through 2014 with uh, longer term bond yields trending down. Do you think we finally reached the bottom there? What a terrible thing to be asked to prophesy. I think we are still in a period of very low nominal global growth and a shortage of high quality bonds. And that's what's reflected in what has happened in the past. But take Germany in the, in the yellow. A 10 year Bund has a yield now that you would, you would get a much higher cash flow, much more cash over the next 10 years from holding German equities, even if those, equity, those companies cut their dividends by 75% now and didn't increase them for the next 10 years. So the relative value argument is very much in favour of equities relative to these type of bonds at this stage. If I could uh, ask one last question just to put you on the spot, what's the thing you worry about most for 2015 as an investor strategist? I worry about the disruption caused by um, the fall in the price of oil from 100 to 60. I don't think you can have a decline in the world's most importantly traded commodity without there being some financial disruption arising for it. We've seen it in Russia already. Uh, and I think there's a lot of leverage which has been built up off that, which uh, is going to be difficult to get past. Ewan, thank you very much. Uh, so a note of caution there to end with, but some optimism about the prospects for financial markets in 2015.